So for the following problem, we're going to solve absolute value inequalities. We're then going to write our solution sets using interval notations. So as we can see here with example A and B, we are taking a look at absolute value problems. They are inequality versions of them, not equations, which means that they're greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or greater than or less than type of problems here. Now when it comes to working with absolute value equations or inequalities, there are some little formulas that we do need to be aware of. Because when it comes to absolute value uh, problems, what we tend to do is we tend to take our given problem, our given equation or inequality, and what we need to do is we need to convert it into two separate inequalities. And that's based off the formula. And it's really based off what kind of problem you're presented with. So for example, with A, we have the absolute value of 5x minus 12 minus 4 is greater than or equal to 20. So this is the style that looks like this. Absolute value of AX plus B is greater than or equal to some number K. It, this rule says that if you're given this type of problem, this is how it's going to get split into. Your first equation is going to be AX plus B greater than or equal to K. Looks exactly like what we already have, just get rid of the absolute value bars. But we're going to have a second uh, inequality when it comes to this. So our first one's going to look like this. And our next one is going to look like AX plus B less than or equal to negative K. So what we do with our second inequality is we flip the inequality. So instead of greater than or equal to, it's now less than or equal to. And then we change the sign on what it said equal to. All right, so our first equation is what I consider our normal equation. It's our regular equation, what it looks like from the beginning. Our second equation is the one that we're going to tweak. We're always going to flip the symbol and change the sign. Before I take our problem and split it into our two separate inequalities, let's do just a tiny bit of cleanup first. Uh, what we want is we want our absolute value bars to be completely by itself on one side of our problem. We almost have that here. The only thing going on is we have this minus 4 hanging out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add this 4 to both sides, which is going to get rid of it on the left, leaving me with the absolute value of 5x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 24. Okay, at this point, this is where I'm going to create my two uh, problems. So the first one is going to look like our regular problem. So it's going to look like 5x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 24. Our second one is going to look like 5x minus 12. Flip the symbol, change the sign. Less than or equal to negative 24. These are the two problems that we are going to solve and then put our answer in interval notation. Solving the first one here, we're going to add 12 to both sides, which means it's going to cancel on the left, leaving us with 5x greater than or equal to 36. And then we're going to divide out our coefficient on both sides, which means 5 over 5 is going to cancel, leaving us with x being greater than or equal to 36 divided by 5, or 36 fifths. 5 does not divide evenly into 36. That fraction cannot be simplified, so it's simply x greater than or equal to 36 over 5. I'm going to pause there while I work on solving the other inequality. For this one here, we would start by adding the 12 to both sides. Negative 12 plus 12 is going to cancel, so we drop down the 5x. Less than or equal to negative 24 plus 12 gives us a negative 12. And then we have to divide out our coefficients. So we're dividing both sides by 5 to get us x is less than or equal to a negative 12 fifths. So these are our two solutions for this particular problem. Because these are inequalities, we tend to put inequalities. Uh, sometimes we might be asked to create a number line for them. But a lot of times we have to put our answers in interval notation. Before putting our answers in interval notation, I like to create a number line just because it helps give a better visual and I feel like it really helps us understand more how to put this into uh, interval notation. So just a quick little number line here, okay? So our two solutions are 36 fifths and negative 12 fifths. So I'm just going to put them on the, on the number line in relation to each other. 
So negative 12 fifths, I'm going to say, is over here. Right? Negative 12 fifths is smaller than our other solution. It's negative, so it'll be on the left. And let's just say that the 36 fifths is over here. Right? It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just an estimate of what we're looking at. Um, now, when we're creating a number line, remember that we're always paying attention to what kind of dot we have on our number line and what direction are we shading. What I mean by that, by what kind of dot is, are we going to have a solid dot or are we going to have an open dot? This comes from what kind of symbols we have. If we have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we have a solid dot. If we have less than or greater than, we have an open dot. For both of our problems here, we have a greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So for both of them, that's going to be a solid dot on our numbers. I'll show you in a little bit how this is going to pertain to our integral notation. For the negative 12 fifths, it says here that x is less than negative 12 fifths. If x is less than negative 12 fifths, it's smaller than negative 12 fifths, so it's everything to the left of it being shaded. For 36 over 5, we're taking a look at this one right over here. This says that x is greater than or equal to 36 fifths. Greater than is bigger than is more than, so we want everything to the right of that. So this is what our number line would look like. Putting this in interval notation, I like looking at a number line to do interval notation because interval notation is done from left to right. In interval notation, we're going to have something that maybe looks like this, maybe with brackets or a combination of the two. And what it represents is you're going to have a number here on the left and you're going to have a number here on the right. The number on the left is your leftmost answer on your number line. The number on the right is your rightmost answer. So what this is going to look like here, so starting from the left of our number line, Right, this arrow signifies that this is going to keep going on and on and on and on, and it's going to keep going off into the negative direction, and it's never going to stop. When that happens, we call that negative infinity. So on the left-hand side, our leftmost answer is negative infinity. And our solution is going to go, go, go until it gets to this point right here. Right? This is where it stops. That's where, where we have a break in our number line. So it's going to go from negative infinity, and it's going to stop at the negative 12 fifths right over here. Because we have a solid dot on negative 12 fifths, that means we have a bracket for negative 12 fifths. For infinities, when it keeps going in either direction, we always signify that with a parenthesis. A parenthesis has the same meaning as an open dot. It means that we don't include that answer. And think about it, you can never actually get to infinity. You're always going to keep going and going and going. And because you can't actually equal infinity, that is why we have a parenthesis on the infinity. When it comes to infinities, you will always have parentheses when dealing with infinities. When it comes to numbers, it'll be an open dot or solid dot just based off of what inequality symbol you have. Is it equal to? It'll be a solid dot. Not equal to? It'll be an open dot. So I have this left part shaded into this point, and then we have a break here in our number line. And then we have this right side that is shaded. Because we're trying to join the left side, this break, and then we have our right side here, we signify that by doing a union, which just means, hey, this left shaded area, union along with this right shaded area. So now we have to do the interval notation for the right hand side of our number line. So just taking a look at this section right here, our leftmost answer where our shading starts is at 36 over 5, and that is a solid dot at 36 over 5, which means it's a bracket, and it's going to keep going, keep going, keep going, and again, remember this arrow just means that it's going to keep going off in that direction. It's never going to stop, so this is positive infinity over here. So that's how I'm going to close this one out. And remember that positive infinity or any infinities are always signified by parentheses. So this right here is my interval notation for the problem. Negative infinity to the negative 12 fifths, union 36 fifths all the way to positive infinity. So that's what our interval notation will look like for example A. Let's take a look at example B and let's see what's going on with that particular one here. 
So if I'm taking a look at example B, right, I see that I have the absolute value of 4x minus 9 is less than 10. All right, so I see that our absolute value is already by itself on the left-hand side of the problem. There's no tweaking or anything that needs to be done with this one. But let's make sure that we understand how we break this into our two separate inequalities. So for this particular absolute value problem, this is set up in the form ax plus b less than some number, right? It says less than some number. And when you're given this type of problem, this is how it gets split up. Your first inequality, again, is your normal one. So it's just going to look like ax plus b is less than k. It's going to be what you're given. And your second inequality is going to look very similar. And the left side is always the same, ax plus b. Flip the symbol, change the sign. It will now be greater than instead of less than, and now a negative k instead of a positive k. Now what this looks like with our specific problem, so first one here, it's going to be our normal one, just like it gave it to us. 4x minus 9 less than 10. Our second problem will be 4x minus 9. Flip the symbol, change the sign. So greater than negative 10 is what that's going to look like. These are the two inequalities that we are going to solve for. So starting with the one on the left here, I'm going to start by adding 9 to both sides, giving me that 4x is less than 19, and dividing out the coefficient. So dividing everything by 4, we're left with x is less than 19 fourths. Pausing there while we solve the other one. So here we're also going to add 9 on both sides. It's going to cancel on the left, giving us 4x is greater than a negative 1. And dividing both sides by our coefficient, we're getting that x is greater than a negative 1 fourth. So we need a number line here for this one here. So let me do the number line right over here. Again, the first thing on our number line, this is just going to help us write our interval notation. Our two solutions are a negative 1 fourth. Right, so we have a negative 1 fourth. And then we also have 19 fourths. All right, so negative 1 fourth and 19 fourths. If I'm taking a look at these two problems, I have a greater than or a less than symbol. Neither one of them has the equal than on it, so that means it's going to be an open dot for both of these. It says that I want less than the 19 fourths, so this is my 19 fourths. I want everything less than that, which is everything to the left. And it says I want everything greater than the negative one-fourth, so that's everything to the right. So that means that I'm shading this section, this area right here in between both numbers. So this area right here that's shaded is what I need to put in interval notation. So remember, interval notation, leftmost answer, rightmost answer. On the left side over here, that is the negative one-fourth. On the right side over here, that is the 19 over 4, right? That's where it starts and ends. Uh, negative 1 fourth to 19 fourths. The only thing we need to pay attention to is do we have parentheses or brackets? But keep in mind that open dots are always parentheses. Open dots are parentheses, solid dots are brackets. So this is what our interval notation looks like. Negative 1 fourth to 19 fourths. Otherwise, that's it for this problem.